Hello, it's Alex from Remote Work Life here. I hope you are well. Remote Work Life is the podcast for remote professionals from around the world to help you to grow and learn from those who know the world of remote work best. I'll share with you what I've learned from my uh, conversations with a number of CEOs, leaders and entrepreneurs, and I'll talk to you about the benefits of remote work and hopefully help you to understand what to expect so you can begin to build your own remote work life. And if you've been joining me or listening to me uh, over the last few episodes, I've been talking about the pillars of remote work. These pillars I have uh, derived from my conversations with various remote professionals over the last year or so. And in terms of uh, the, the actual seven pillars, I've actually identified seven pillars the reason I put them together, or at least uh, wanted to uh, let you know about them, is because these tend to be, these seven pillars tend to be features, characteristics um, that have cropped up about re- remote workers and about remote work from the various conversations. So I've noticed patterns in, in what people have said about remote work and remote workers and decided to just really try to encapsulate it within these seven pillars for you whether you're you're new and I think it would help if you are new to understand what it takes to be a remote worker or to have a remote business or if you are I suppose interested in your own personal development it can help you to really to begin to understand uh, what you need to do to I guess level up your experience in your 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 I suppose your capacity um, as a remote worker wh- whether you be in a business or have your own business so that's the idea behind it and today's pillar that I'm going to talk about is entrepreneurial spirit because I believe that remote workers share many of the characteristics um, that entrepreneurs have and when we think about Entrepreneurs, I guess we think immediately about somebody who owns their own business or is a CEO, for example, or some sort of, um, yeah, some sort of startup or whatever it may be. But those all the, those are all the things that perhaps spring to mind initially. But that's not to say, even if you are working for a remote business or a non-remote business, you can still have the characteristics of an entrepreneur. And I think... If you do, then it will put you in good stead if you're looking to get into a remote role. Because, as I said, there's lots of similarities. One of those similarities, and I'm going to go through a few similarities just here, just quickly, is um, remote workers tend to have a real grasp and a real pride in the skills that they developed. And they're really, um, they're really focused on that particular skill. And what you find is if you're looking for a new role in a remote business, what you'll need to do is really understand where your expertise lies and sell that expertise to whoever it is you may be speaking to, whether it be a hiring manager or a CEO or somebody that you meet at a a networking event. Don't be unfocused don't talk about too many things so it's really important that you understand where your where you know where your niche is you know so for example what i tend to see quite often is digital marketers especially talking about all of the things that they can do so copywriting email marketing seo um, google ads facebook ads instagram and they tend to just really list it and throw it all out there when what you should first and foremost do is really begin to understand what the demands and what the requirements are when it comes to a project you're pitching for or a role that you're applying to and sell those specialist skills and that niche that you're within to the person who is looking for your skills because what you te- what you will what will happen is you'll appear unfocused and that's the last thing you really want so that focus is something that um, re- the best remote workers some of the best remote workers and entrepreneurs have in common another uh, i suppose common feature common characteristic 
of a remote worker and an entrepreneur. And my reason behind saying or using the entrepreneurial spirit pillar is because remote workers, entrepreneurs have passion. They have a real passion uh, about certain things. So another example I can give, I'll give myself as an example. One of my passions is tech, technology, gadgets, um, and you can u- often use your passions as, again, to, to spark conversations, to sell what you do so that people can understand you better and where you're coming from, your values, your, you know, your, the mission, all that kind of thing. So just, just to give you an example. So as much as I like tech, I also like um, helping where I can to really introduce people from underrepresented groups to tech to things like for example coding i did a coding project at my my kids local school with that in mind i understood that for example girls there's an under you know girls are certainly an underrepresented group girls and women in the, in the world of tech and i wanted to do something about it and as i said it was my passion so i set up this project it was really successful we had 12 12 children um Five of those children did over 100 hours of code. I was really, really proud of that. But I was even more proud of the fact that four of that five were girls. And that that really sort of really ignited a fire within me to, to actually continue to really push my passion and really help as much as I possibly can. So I'm always looking for opportunities. If you're listening to this, I'm looking for opportunities to to help in that regard, especially uh, really boosting that underrepresentation in tech. So think about how you can do that. How you, how, what passions do you have and what can you do to, to really not just talk about what it is, but talk about how you've used your passion um, in a way that's helped in some way or, or form. So yeah, that's another common theme amongst um, entrepreneurs and remote workers is, is that passion. I don't want to go off the off on a tangent too much. Another common theme is um, autonomy, or at least the ability to to thrive in an autonomous sort of um, setup. Because you're not going to have somebody next to you to to help you with that particular project, and you you're not always going to have an immediate access to somebody to help you out. So. Uh, being able to work autonomously is something that you will need to to get used to. That's not to say you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have or you're not gonna have um, support from your teammates from your remote teammates, but for the most part, you're gonna be expected to work without any supervision. And that's again, entrepreneurs have to do that all the time, or at least you know they have they have they work on their projects while their team is is working on on their own projects. So yeah, that's another common theme and an, another reason why I said um, that the entrepreneurial spirit is certainly a pillar of the remote workers uh, toolkit. Another re- another similarity is the communication. Entrepreneurs, remote workers are excellent communicators, have to be excellent communicators. And if if you're not, if you're not quite there yet, it's something that you can brush up on. It's something that you can learn to do and get better at because you're going to find that you're going to be writing quite a lot. You're going to be um, doing video conferences, maybe. You're going to be doing audio conferences. You're going to be texting. You're going to be doing all kinds of things that, um, that I suppose, mean or that, that uh, makes it necessary for you to be a good communicator. Another similarity between um, the entrepreneur and the remote worker is they have um, their own setup usually and they go about creating their own setup for their own comfort. And that's something I had to do again when I had my my remote office for the first time. I went about it completely, completely the wrong way the first time around. I I got, I remember I got, um, what did I get? I got a, a kitchen table and uh, a kitchen chair and quickly found that that was just not comfortable enough to see me through the day so I just went about it got an ergonomic chair got a a good desk all that kind of thing the the equipment got myself a a computer that was 
was super super fast, super fast broadband, all those kinds of things. That setup, that setup is something that um, as an entrepreneur or as a remote worker you're going to need. So another similarity and another reason why it's it's my one of my pillars of remote work. That resilience as well, actually resilience and discipline. It's something that is core to the remote worker and is core also to the entrepreneur. You're going to cut, you're going to experience times when you are, you know, where, when it becomes tough, when you're on your own and you're struggling with a project or you're struggling with balance. I don't know, maybe there's a number of different things that you may, um, cha- a number of different challenges that you may face along the way. But um, what you've got to try to do is find a way of working through those challenges. That So you need that resilience. Um, it may be that you seek help and often um, the, the solutions, the answers that you, uh, the answers that you seek aren't always answers that you can give or you can, I suppose, um, provide yourself. So you will need to, to seek help, but you'll need that resilience along the way to not give up and to see your project from start to finish. And as I said, it's linked to discipline because um, there's certain things that as a remote worker, as an entrepreneur, you will need to be disciplined in certain aspects because you don't have somebody there telling you when to take your lunch or at least prompting you to take your lunch. You don't have somebody saying, you know, take a five minute break or get do some stretching because you, you've been sitting at your desk for the last two hours. You need that. Uh, you, you need that discipline yourself you don't have somebody there telling you to to drink your water or prompt you everything has to come from you for for the most part so that discipline to do all of those kinds of things is something that's gonna really be important um to i suppose help you to to thrive in your remote role organization as well you you're going to need to be super organized to get things done and again that's another thing that you have in common with the entrepreneur you have to be super organized you have to be all those words organized discipline resilience they're all connected in one way shape or form so yeah it's it's it can you can really begin to see can't you the the common themes here when it comes to the remote worker it's almost like you're a, even if you're a employed by a remote business you're you're in a way a business of one because you have to organize yourself you have to really sort of look after yourself and all those things and all those aspects so that you can really get on in life and this is why it's as i said it's such an important pillar for you to consider Um, and from time to time you're going to need to really review where you're up to in terms of your, your skills your um your, your, your role? Are you happy with what you're doing? What do you need to go to the next level? So again, entrepreneurs, remote workers have a strong sense of self. And if they really come to a point where they're uncertain, again, they have to, you have to use your own instincts, your own uh, resources, and your own, you know, your proactivity to un- begin to really understand where you're up to. So Again, another aspect uh, of of that remote work or of, of a remote worker that is similar to the entrepreneur. So that's really it. Uh, I didn't want to make this episode too long, but I just wanted to, as I said, highlight this as being a very important pillar for you to consider. And if you have any questions about it or have any suggestions, in fact, or if you feel I've missed something out, or if, if there's something that I can add, let me know. You can connect with me via LinkedIn, or you can just um, connect with me via Facebook inside our free Facebook group. It's the Remote Work Life Accelerator Group on Facebook, where you can also hopefully connect with other remote workers. I think we've got near enough a thousand, if not more, people inside the group. So. I hope there's somebody at least in there that you can start a conversation with and get to know because it's always important as well to to really stay connected, to avoid isolation. And that's the whole purpose of this podcast. 
So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that episode. Any questions, let me know via those various avenues I just suggested. And um, I hope you can join me on the next uh, episode where I'll be covering another, um, another pillar of remote work.